Armando Hasturungan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasturungan. Please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including your artworks. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for the graphics. In this video, we're going to talk about giardiasis, which is an infection caused by the protozoan flagellate Giardia intestinalis, also known as Giardia lamblia. Giardiasis is a particular issue in developing countries and is the main cause of diarrhea-like symptoms and abdominal pain. It is, the, it, is a major, it is a major issue in developing countries because of overcrowding, the unhygienic environment, and poor water, water quality control in these areas. In developing countries, the prevalence is highest in children, so you can imagine how it is a major issue. Giardiasis is caused by the protozoan a flagellate, as mentioned, Giardia intestinalis or Lamblia. There are two forms. There is the Giardia cyst, which is the infective form, which is about 10 micrometers in diameter and is an ovoid cell shape. It contains four nuclei in the cytoplasm. The Giardia cyst can become the Giardia trophozoite, which is the mobile form, the one that moves around. It is pear-shaped in it is pear-shaped with eight flagellate and thus it is known as a protozoan flagellate because it has eight flagella. It contains two anterior suction discs which allows it to attach to the mucosal surface of the intestines and it contains two nuclei in the cytoplasm. Now let's see how this protozoan flagellate causes an infection in the human body. Here I'm drawing a human with the gastrointestinal tract, the mouth, the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and the large intestine. I'm drawing the gastrointestinal tract because this is how the protozoan flagellate causes an infection in humans. Now, the infection can begin when a human ingests, ingests Giardia lamblia cysts through contaminated fluid or water. So here we have a water would be contaminated with Giardia cysts. The cysts will travel down through the esophagus, through the stomach, and essentially bind to the mucus layer of the small intestine, the duodenum here. In the small intestine, one cyst will become two trophozoites, will release two trophozoites, a process known as excystation. The trophozoite, not cysts, will multiply through longitudinal binary fission in the small intestine. So here the trophozoite will multiply through binary fission, longitudinal binary fission, and then the trophozoite can then produce cysts, which again, which we'll talk about soon. The trophozoite will attach to the villous surface of the small intestine using its suction discs causing abdominal pain, cramps, and dysentery. The trophozoite, the Giardia trophozoite, can actually move to the colon um, and bind onto the uh, mucosal surface there and produce cysts, a process known as encystation. And these cysts can then be passed in feces. So the trophozoites can move into the colon from the small intestine and then produce cysts here. Now, the cyst can be passed in feces, and the trophozoite can be passed in feces as well, like so. Now, these cysts are very resistant and are the infective form, remember, and can survive for many months in warm climates. And this is why these are an issue in developing countries, because most developing countries have a particularly warm climate. Symptoms of giardiasis include abdominal pain, nausea, and particularly diarrhea. There is rarely blood and mucus in stool in the feces. Chronic infections can be associated with uh, vitamin B12 malabsorption and lactose intolerance, which can be an issue. To diagnose giardiasis, we can use a microscopic examination of cysts in the stool in the feces. But if this is negative and we still suspect the person is suffering from giardiasis, we can use a string test and then microscopy. String test is essentially when we put a string inside 
this human that we suspect is suffering from giardiasis, this string will travel down through the gastrointestinal tract and essentially we will take a sample from the mucus layer of the small intestines here. And then from this uh, specimen collection, we can, uh, we can use microscopy to identify if there is a trophozoa or a cyst here. To treat giardiasis, we use um, just mitro, mitronidazole, which is also used in many other protozoan infections. I hope you enjoyed this video on giardiasis. It was very basic, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.